Monday, meeting, Monday, March, March Ooh. 7th. Ooh. Give me feedback, everybody. If you're not speaking, make sure you're muted. I got it. Okay. Uh, meeting March 7th, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, let's uh, take the roll. Roll call. Yep, I can take care of that, Mr. Chair. Uh, Piat. Here, present. Yang. Here. Alder Johnson. Here. Uh, Mr. Cowarts. Here. I believe Mr. Sherman is excused. Uh, Mr. Champion does not appear to be here. And Mr. Garcia. Here. We have a quorum, sir. All right. So let's first then let's take a motion for the approval of the agenda. Yeah, we have um, so moved. So who made that? Johnson. Okay. Second. Second that. Oh. Second by Tara. Uh, we have a motion to approve the agenda. First uh, by Johnson. Seconded by uh, Tara. Motion approved. Let's also uh, take a motion for approval of a mi of minutes. Approval of the minutes from the February 7th meeting, 2022, of the EDA. Do we have a, a motion for approval? So moved. And that was second. by uh, Garcia. Okay. And the second? Second, Johnson. Okay. Uh, moved by, uh, uh, was it Garcia and seconded by Johnson? Yep. All right. Moving on to regular business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have consideration with possible action on a term sheet proposal for the development of city owned parcels 21 22, 21 24, and 21 189. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, we recommend staff's recommending that the authority convene into closed session. So I would like to read the statutory requirements on closed session language, if I may. Okay. The authority may convene into closed session pursuant to section 19.85, section 1, subsection E, Wisconsin statutes, for purposes of deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons, and section 19.85, section 1, subsection G, Wisconsin statutes, for purposes of conferring with legal counsel for for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. The authority will thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.85 subsection two Wisconsin statutes to take action on items discussed in closed session if appropriate and to consider the remainder of the agenda. With that, we go into closed you. session. Do we have to take a motion for? Yep. Alder Johnson made that motion. We just need a second. Okay. Second. I second that. Okay. I do. I believe we need a roll call, Mr. Chair. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Piat. Yes. Miss Yang. Here. Uh, Alder Johnson. Yes. Mr. Cowarts. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Okay. Give us a second to go into closed session here. A second. So we just could just give us a moment here. I think we'll do. Make a motion that we return back to open session. Second that. Okay. We're back in open session. I think we can just do a voice vote. Is there any any I guess any opposed folks to that? I guess. All right. So unanimously, we are back in open session. I would make a motion that we direct staff to proceed as directed in closed session. Second. Okay. Good motion is approved. Okay. Neil, do we have to re re uh, repeat that language and take a um, attendance coming back in session? I don't think we needed a roll call to come back into session, I don't believe. Right, you can and see was, all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, it was unanimous anyway, so I think we're we're in good shape on that one. So, so, so I think that is we appreciate we will, staff will proceed. So, thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, we have informational uh, staff update on brownfield programs. That's a, that's next on the agenda. Um, that would be me. I don't have a. Um... PowerPoint presentation tonight. I gave a pretty full presentation just last month. Um, I don't really have any additional invoices that came in since our last presentation. So we're still at about 80% uh, 
87% of our budget's been spent down for our brownfields program. Um, we've assessed nine sites still. Um, coming up, we're gonna be uh, here later this month doing some testing at the former Associated Bank parking lot on Monroe, um, helping that uh, project uh, get started uh, for the, um, the housing project with Gorman uh, on Monroe. So a little bit of testing there. Um, I think that's probably the, the biggest news so far. I hope in the next uh, month or two, maybe to be able to announce some additional grant opportunities, um, but it's nothing, nothing I can talk about yet. So okay. just leave it at that tonight, unless there's any questions. All right, if no questions, uh, Neil, how about the director's report? All right, I'll go race this through so we can get John out here and Chris and guys out here on time. Looks like I got like I got like eight minutes. I can do this. So we'll get race through here. Um, uh, obviously, folks probably saw news last week. Um, we were fortunate enough to be announced for uh, a five million dollar neighborhood investment grant for the JBS site. Uh, we're excited to get that and get that project moving, rolling forward. Uh, staff was also very intricately involved in the 15 million dollar county for the coal piles relocation so uh two pretty big projects that were announced uh wasn't without some bad news though we didn't we did not get funded for the shipyard the public market project and some affordable housing projects that we were working on so we are still sharpening our pencils and going to be going back after hopefully some other funds uh in the immediate future for that uh staff did present uh participate in a collaboration exercise with about well, I then want to say 50, 50 or 60 other partners in the community regarding the JBS site the other day last week, uh, kind of identifying housing partners, some urban food uh, types of partners and working with how we might be moving forward on that particular site. So just kind of laying some groundwork on what resources might be in the community that we can leverage and help out with and start laying some groundwork for that. Um, obviously, as the uh, kind of we actually have five active active development agreements we're working on between the RDA and EDA right now. So in various stages, so we are we're hopping busy. So we don't know what the how God forbid if there wasn't a pandemic and there wasn't climbing interest rates and there wasn't material shortages. I hate to think how busy we'd be. Uh, we're very for, for very fortunate. But that being said, we also want to get these projects to the finish line before uh, costs end up overtaking some of these too. Um, we did participate in a zoning for affordable housing workshop, which was an interesting uh, endeavor put on by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities to kind of talk about how we might adjust our, our, uh, our zoning code a little bit to allow a little bit more flexibility with some housing in certain areas. So we're kind of going to be having some things probably bringing forward on that going forward as well. So uh, we are keeping plenty busy here in, in the Community and Economic Development Department, as it should be. We wouldn't have it any other way. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, able to answer any questions folks may have. I got a question, if you don't mind. Yes, so, yeah, so I, I actually live right by where, where the coal mile is. Where, where exactly is that being relocated? And then um, my question is, is there any use for that? Or is, are we just relocating it to another place? That's a, a great question, Ace. And it's, it's one that kind of gets misconstrued in the media quite a bit in terms of what's actually happening. Um, so Brown County is actually buying the currently decommissioned Pulliam power plant site right at the mouth of the Fox River. Uh, kind, of, kind of expand their port operations that the Port of Green Bay already kind of has up in that immediate area. There's a lot of other industrial uses right there. They are actually acquiring that spot from WPS and are going to prepare that for basically be a big portion of that section to be the new home of Sea Rice Coal Company. Um, so essentially what they're going to do is they're going to, they're not going to, it won't be, you know, we talk about moving the coal piles. Well, it's actually technically not moving them. We're, they're going to, what's going to happen is they're going to get that new facility ready to go. The county will do it. They'll lease it to Sea Rice. They'll get it fully improved. They'll do stormwater planning. There's a whole bunch of other design engineering they need to do to get the site ready. But once they do that, they will actually be the next ship of coal that comes in once they have it will unload at that new site. And they will spend down all the coal at the current site. So they, they won't, what they'll do is essentially that, that pile should get lower and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and not get bigger anymore, <laughs> God willing. Uh, and then, so, and so that's how that transition will happen. There's a lot of work that needs to be happening on that site. They need to finish the acquisition. There's a lot of design engineering they still need to do to get that done. There's, so there's a lot of things that are still need to happen, but the acquisition of that 
site by the county was kind of the first really big domino that we can honestly say once that happens we're on our way and the project is really moving forward for the first time so good thank you any other questions for neil I did want to just, Mr. Mr. Chair, I did want to say, put one little note on here. I, you know, Matt stole my thunder a little bit at the beginning. Did want to congratulate uh, Tara on on being named. Uh, the, it was the official, was the, the 2022 Young Professional of the Year by the current Young Professionals Network. So congratulations <laughs> to Tara on that. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's, we are proud to have you on the committee with us, Tara. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Neil. And no, I appreciate every one of you who mentioned it. And um, I'm just so, so honored to be able to be guided by the best people ever. So thank you, everyone. That's my report, Mr. Chair. All right. All right. Very good. Um, I guess then it's a, we have a motion for adjournment with the next meeting being next. Next meeting is April 4th. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Right, I'm sorry, who made that? Johnson. Okay, Johnson. Uh, do we have okay. a second? And I see a second. Yep. Okay. Motion has been forwarded and approved. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. See you, everyone. Thank you.